God dag och välkommen alla samman. Um, today we're going to speak a little bit about the runes and in other videos I'm going to uh, talk about um, runic magic and exactly how it was practiced back then um, but I uh, wanted to first speak about the runes so we know exactly what we're looking at um, because it can be just so many different things. Um, uh, now, just because the runes are written down as runes does not mean um, what we're looking at is pagan. Um, so, most scholars agree that the runes have been used since uh, 200 BC. The earliest runes findings were, were a little bit later than that, but um, most people agree that they were used that late, uh, or perhaps even later, I believe. Um, uh, but they were used all the way up until... Um, the 19th century in some places, um, so so they were definitely used as a uh, uh, throughout a big big uh, spread of time, and they were used for different purposes. Um, so one point to make is that they were used as symbols to start off with. Um, each rune meant something individually, and I'm um, just going to show a few examples here. So originally they were they they had meaning to them. The, the word rune meant secret. That that translated that runes mean secrets. Um, that that's what they that's what they had. All of them had secret meanings in them, and that's the way it was. They were not uh, letters. They were not an alphabet, which were used to uh, compile sentences until much later on in time. So originally they were just used as symbols. Um, symbols that contain secrets, and, and we're going to be looking at that uh, in other videos. So eventually, of course, they would uh, end up being used as a form of writing. Um, we see a really, really uh, early example of that, um, which dates to about the 300s, and that is called the Angangstein, and that's found in Fagernes in Norway, and uh, we can see it here. I'll just read it out. Um, this is in Proto-Norse, by the way, so this was before uh, Old Norse um, was the spoken or written language of, uh, of Scandinavia, so this is pro Proto-Norse a lot closer to Proto-Germanic, actually, uh, at this point in the 300s. So it says, Ek go gastis juno faihido. Uh, and that translates to I good guest uh, painted or wrote this runic uh, inscription um, so that's easy it's just, it's just a guy a guy who wrote this and says that he wrote it uh, pretty easy to uh, understand that and, and there's probably some deeper meaning to that too uh, which we'll look in uh, at later videos but um, this is the first example of, that we have of uh, the runes being used as actual letters to compile a sentence um, with uh, phonological value um, so that's a very, very early example of it in the 300s, and we're just going to look at a different one right here just to paint a different picture. Here's another one. Now this is uh, one of the Bergen rune sticks that I'm going to read out from now. Um, there were some rune sticks that were found in Bergen um, quite a bit later on, I believe. Some of them were found uh, in the 1300s. Um, or dated back to the 1300s, I'm sorry, I think they were found a lot later than that, so this was quite a bit later on in time, uh, could be a thousand years after the, the, the runes were first used as uh, phonological symbols. Um, so I'm going to show here, this is, uh, this is the rune and this is how it is written in, in, the, uh, in, in runes, in Fultajk. Okay, now here we're going to see how it's translated into uh, the Roman alphabet. So we see here that it's, uh, it's Latin. It's Latin for sure. Um, so uh, what happens when we translate it to English? I'll look here. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a prayer. It's a prayer. It's a totally 100% Christian prayer. Uh, nothing to do with paganism at all. Um, that's why I wanted to show both of these um, to uh, just explain the differences that, that, that we can see. Um, now this this spell right here, uh, the Christian spell, it was a it was a prayer to help deal with childbirth, to help a woman uh, going through childbirth. So that's what it was. Uh, so that's a cool little. Uh, example of magic for you, um, but in this video I just wanted to show the difference between these two, um, just to show that um, just because something is written in runes does not make it pagan, so we have to look at each case uh, individually and then determine um, exactly where it comes from. Um, 
the only thing that I could say is um, that if we find the runes being used as symbols um, and not as writing, like letters with uh, c completing sentences, then the symbols um, probably have a, a pagan origin, of course. Um, and we see a lot of this in the Icelandic staves and, and inscriptions uh, that uh, I, I just released a couple of videos of this week. Um, some charms to deal with uh, protection and uh, and how to deal with uh, thieves, uh, theft of your property. I released some of those. Uh, videos earlier this week explaining those, and those had clear uh, runic inscriptions in them, and it was just the symbol, not the uh, not runes written out as a, a, a with with a phonological value like with a sentence. Um, so, um, in that case, we can be pretty sure that uh, that the the spell or the magical stave has a pagan origin. Um, so that's just a quick little note. So we're going to be looking at some runic magic in later videos. And uh, that's it for today. See ya.